How's it going? Now I know you guys were expecting part two of the plasma cutter build. Well, our old pal Jeff Bezos had a different idea in mind. You see, this is the little pinion gear thing that I ordered to drive the gantry. And this is the chain that came. I don't, I don't think it fits. Amazon! Here I'm left twiddling my thumbs, waiting for a new chain to come. So the clear solution to this problem is a one day build. We're gonna kick this thing off with some microwaves. What could I possibly be doing with two microwaves? Well, you can read the title, right? See, while having a full size plasma cutter is really gonna improve my life greatly, there's one problem. Full size sheets suck to carry. So, we're gonna go digging inside this danger box and liberate the transformer. Uh-oh. Security screws. No problem. Now I feel I should probably put a little disclaimer here. Don't go digging around in microwaves unless you know what you're doing. Like 60% of the components in this thing will kill you if used improperly. So, just don't do it. Hopefully that keeps YouTube from taking down this video like they did with my Lichtenberg burner video. YouTube! Anyway, I am gonna liberate the rest of these parts, but this is all that we're after today. Hey, check this out. It's like a nice little bike bell. Whoa! Look at this! The top knob to pick the power has some uh, funky mechanics going on. We gotta get to the bottom of this. So there's no way that I can actually uh, have all the gears in the right place with only one side of the cover on, so we just have to imagine here. The power knob just moves this rack up and down, and it's input onto a gear that should be right here, but it's on the other side of this. And I think it just changes the gearing on the timer to make it go longer or shorter for higher or lower power. I love me a good workaround. That's cool. Anyway, uh, my squirrel brain actually kind of helped me out here because I wouldn't have opened this otherwise. These contacts are going to be useful. Yoink. Ta-da! And here we have two microwaves, minus all the stuff I don't want. Okay, let's be honest. I have no reason to keep this. Say goodbye, little bell. Anyway. Ah! Oh, these are all that we need today. Now, I know you guys have probably seen this done half a million times on YouTube, so we're gonna do it in super speed. Okay, can't do super speed with this dinky little hammer. Now that's a hammer. Just like that. We got a bit of a split there, so... I'm just gonna give it the tiniest little tack. Now then. I've taken a tool battery and shoved some contacts into some balls of tin foil and clamped them onto the battery contacts. Janky? Absolutely. Works? Absolutely. So, this is when we find out this is gonna work at all. Negative goes on. Positive goes on. Hey, look at that! It works! So how do we take that and make it into a usable tool? Well, in true one day build fashion, we'll start with a technically usable tool. This was 20 bucks. Click. Why anyone would spend 20 bucks on this is beyond me. Anyway, we don't need the fan. Let's mutilate this thing. I was gonna so nicely and properly take this thing apart, but my security bit won't fit in all the holes. So, perfect. Now, the problem that I foresee is these wires are danky. Let's see if they burn. Not burning yet, but who knows if it's working. Oh, can you hear that? It's vibrating. That means there's some sort of PWM signal. Well darn, we gotta take this thing apart after all. 
So we only need these two components. This is the board that was causing the funky vibrations and it does seem like it's an oscillator. There's no chips or anything on here besides these little 555 timers. But, you know, we don't care about any of that. Yoink. Trash. This is all that I've changed here. I've got a thicker gauge wire, got it soldered to the battery contacts, and then one of them comes to the switch, and it's just broken by the switch, and we just turn it on by putting the switch one way. And then these will go to the electromagnet. We don't need any discharge protection or overcurrent protection because the Ryobi batteries allegedly already have that inside of them. So, this should do just fine. No sticky. Flip switch. Still no sticky. Did I go the wrong way? Oh, I went the wrong way. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at that thing backwards in there. Now, no sticky. Turn on switch. Sticky. Well, sticky until it... All right, whatever, let's finish this thing. If those cuts aren't enough motivation to finish my CNC plasma, I don't know what is. And just like that, we have a uh, very janky, uh, definitely built in less than a day, new tool. Let's see if it works. Good thing I've just kind of left this uh, stack of steel sitting on the driveway for a while, because I have no way to carry it. Put this thing to the test. Turn the switch on. Oh! Yeah! That's pretty good. You know what? That's actually not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Like, two of these and kinda got a useful tool. This thing's pretty sweet. One problem though, it looks nothing like it's brothers and sisters. It's kinda the ugly sibling. And you know, I think it deserves better than that. So, we're gonna use the surefire way to turn any one day build into a one week build. 3D printing. So in order to get the contours that we're looking for on this tool, I started by tracing a Milwaukee tool. I really have nothing else to say about the design process. I just wanted to make that joke. <laughs> This was honestly pretty fun. I've never really just gone into Fusion to make funky looking contours before, and I had a good time. Most of the techniques I used to model this thing was from following TLD Studios Fusion 360 modeling course. And it's all fairly simple stuff, it's just simple stuff that I haven't thought to use before, so. Highly recommend. Once that was all designed, spent about uh, four days printing it, I really need to get more 3D printers. Then it was ready for assembly. So here, we have a whole bunch of 3D printed parts. And the first thing I'm noticing, these grays are not even remotely similar. So... Now then, first things first, while that's drying, we need to coerce this electromagnet into this 3D printed part. Hopefully this isn't a bad idea. It's perfect! Look, it's already dirty. See, I can't work with 3D printed parts. Now then, this piece is uh, marginally dry. We can go right ahead and apply our some super glue. And then, this piece can get shoved. Oh, gotta make sure the wires are going through it. This piece can be shoved on down in there, just like that. And these little holes, can get some socket cap screws. Not for any reason, just cause I think it looks kinda cool. Now then, we've got this funky looking part, which goes together with this funky looking part, just like that. I mean, you know, just like that, except with glue. Now we have this little lightning bolt that's supposed to fit into here, but I think it's gonna need some fine tuning. Looks like we can sneak it in from the back. Shut up. Oh god. Alright, there's no good way to do this. I just gotta hold this while it dries. Hold on. 30 second super glue, while um, efficient, 
is stressful to work with. With these parts all glued together, we're gonna go ahead and stick some battery contacts in. Remember these things? Eh, it all comes back around. We're just gonna do that using hot glue. And I mean a copious amount of hot glue. And for this side, I'm just gonna tack the wire down in a couple places using hot glue, just to make sure it's running through the track where we want it to. For the other side, we've already got our contact hot glued in. Then we take our wire straight from the battery contact and solder it to the switch, just like that. And the other side of the switch gets soldered to the wire that goes to the transformer. Now we make sure the wire is running in our little wire channel. Now we just gotta glue these halves together. And I see no reason to not just frickin' go for it. All right, let that chill. And now, to finish this thing up, we just gotta glue it all together. Yeah, these wires are kinda long, but you know, it made it easier to work on. We got plenty of space for uh, wire tucking. Blam! Look at that. That looks like it's straight off the shelf at the Home Depot. It looks like a legit tool, man. Oh, one final piece to finish her off. And that is a job well done. Oh, we got to get some glamour shots of this guy, man. It looks like an actual Ryobi tool. See? The clamshell doesn't even go together very nicely, just like real life. But hey, for first try on the parts, battery clips in all right. And let's see. Oh yeah. The one thing that does worry me about this is the only thing lifting the steel is this super glue joint. Ah, uh, but I guess, you know, that can be fixed somehow later. Maybe drill a hole in here and fill it with epoxy. I don't know. Let's give it a test anyways. Hey, not bad for one super glue joint, huh? Yeah! Hey, that super glue joint is holding, but clearly these are not made to be used with just one. We gotta use the old beautiful new Ryobi tool and uh, Jankmaster 5000 together. I got these nice, convenient handles. Besides the battery falling out, it seems to have no trouble whatsoever lifting these sheets, so I'm sure it could lift a full sheet. Pretty cool, huh? I got another use case for you. See? See this uh, mess around the trash can? Take your handy dandy Cryobi Electro Boy and just sweep it across there. Sweep it across. Pick up, pick up all that nasty gunk. Then just take it over the trash can and bloop. Ah, oh, hey, that's sick. I freaking dig this thing, man. Honestly, Ryobi, hit me up. <laughs> well. That was fun. Welcome to the annual Cranktown shareholders meeting. <laughs> so, it's getting to be that time of year where last year I wound up not making videos for months because my business got busy. Now, I don't want that to happen this year and I'm doing everything in my power to not, but there is no way to avoid the fact that I won't be able to push out a video every two weeks like normal. And as much as I would love to be able to focus all my time on this. Gotta make money. So, fair warning, part two of the plasma cutter video might take a little bit of time. I gotta wait until at least I finish the job that I'm on right now. You know, I want it to be a good video and a good plasma cutter, so it, it's worth the time investment. Now, on the subject of making this a viable income source, I wanna give you guys a fair warning. I'm thinking about taking a lot of my old videos and turning them into shorts because, you know, you, YouTube pushes them for whatever reason. And I really want to start taking this a little bit more seriously and trying to grow the channel. So, if shorts annoy you, feel free to unring the bell until I'm done uploading those things. 
I feel like that's a low hanging fruit that I have yet to grab, you know? So time to start grabbing them fruits. <laughs> I think that's all I needed to say here. So this is a pretty fun little interlude. If you like what you saw, leave a good old dinger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching.